Imagine how cool it would be to be physically invincible. You could leave any battle untouched with your opponent physically exhausted. Now imagine nothing triggered your emotions and you operated with an even emotional cool 100% of the time. That's what emotional strength looks like. But how can we develop it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Again, no one asked. Don't. Recently I've been reading Design in the Mind by Ryan A. Bush and I've found some satisfying answers as to how we can become emotionally invincible, or as I like to put it, emotionally unfuckwittable. According to psychologist James Gross, there are five ways we can approach regulating our emotions. Situation selection, where we change situations we enter. Situation modification, we can change situations once we're in them. Attentional deployment, choose to pay attention to only what we want, selfish. Response modulation, doing an act such as listening to music or drinking. And lastly, cognitive change. We can cognitively restructure or rewire the brain. But we're most concerned with cognitive change because developing tools to regulate your emotions are after they arise will only get you so far. To get to the root of the solution, we must reprogram our responses before the emotion arises. Luckily for us, there's a whole psychological discipline dedicated for this, which has its foundations based in stoicism, cognitive behavioral therapy. To begin, we must interpret our emotional responses as an algorithm. First, our brain receives an input, an event, then we interpret what that event means, cognition, then we produce an emotional reaction, emotion. But thanks to the many years we've been alive, our brain has encoded numerous bad algorithms brought about by traumatic experiences, childhood upbringing, and damn right, over-the-top emotional responses. But let's not judge. We're all human. I think. So in order to change these bad algorithms, we must engage a process called reappraisal, where we override the bad algorithm with a new, better one. Reappraisal means an assessment of something or someone in a different way, otherwise known as reinterpreting. To do this, over the next week, use a notepad. Should have been prepared. Use a notepad and a pen to note down with precision the emotional responses you encounter. Note the situations which trigger such emotions, how you interpreted the situation, and what emotions your interpretation produced. Over time, as you build more awareness to the emotional responses you engage in, you can start to reprogram your bad emotional algorithms by noting the main cognitive distortions we engage in. Here are 10 of the most common, and warning, some will make you giggle. Number one is all or nothing thinking. This is the tendency to think in extremes like always and never without considering nuanced degrees in between. My girlfriend broke up with me. I always ruin relationships. Two is over generalization. This is the tendency to make broad assumptions based on limited specifics. If one person thinks I'm stupid, everyone will. Three, mental filter. The tendency to focus on small negative details to the exclusion of the big picture. My A plus average means nothing because I got C on another assignment. Four, disqualifying the positive. The tendency to dismiss positive aspects of an experience for irrational reasons. If my friend compliments me, she's probably just doing it out of pity. Five, jump into conclusions. The tendency to make unfounded negative assumptions, often in the form of attempted mind reading or fortune telling. Ooh. If that girl I fancy doesn't message me today, that means she must not be interested. Six, catastrophizing. The tendency to magnify or minimize certain details of an experience, painting it as worse or more severe than it is. If my wife leaves me, I will never be able to recover from my misery. I'm getting good at this. Seven, emotional reasoning. The tendency to take one's emotions as evidence of objective truth. If I feel offended because of someone's comment, then they must have wronged me. Eight, three more, should statements. The tendency to apply rigid rules to how one should or must behave. My friend criticized my attitude and that's not what friends should do. Nine, labeling. The tendency to describe oneself in the form of absolute labels. If I make an error, that means I'm an absolute idiot. And lastly, number 10, personalization. The tendency to attribute negative outcomes to oneself without evidence. If my wife is in a bad mood, that means I've definitely done something to annoy her. That was fun. Here's a breakdown of how two of these cognitive distortions would fit into a bad algorithm. I didn't get the job. Fortune telling. I'm never going to get a good job. Emotion. Anxiety. Catastrophizing. I'm fundamentally inadequate. Emotion. Despair. We've all been there.
Use this list of cognitive distortions when analyzing your emotional responses over the next week, because doing so will allow you to distance yourself from the unfolding emotional response. And in fact, in the moment of an unfolding emotional response, you can interrogate your thoughts on the spot by asking these questions. Is this thought realistic? Am I basing my thoughts on facts or on feelings? What is the evidence for this thought? Could I be misinterpreting the evidence? Am I viewing a complicated situation as black and white? Am I having this thought out of habit or do facts support it? Most crucially, it's important to note that when we want to change our cognitive or emotional algorithms, it is important that we do not judge them. Instead, we must interrogate them like a curious scientist rather than an angry drill sergeant. Because, as Carl Jung said, we cannot change anything unless we accept it. Condemnation does not liberate, it oppresses. Then, once you've outlined the emotional algorithms you frequently engage, you can then start to replace them for emotional reactions you would prefer to have. For example, in the situation of not getting a job, you might want to replace it with this. I didn't get the job. Reason. Uh, the interview was good professional experience, actually. Emotion? Confident. Self-regulation. The right job for me is out there, I just need to keep trying. Emotion, motivated and reassured. These two ways of thinking can be conceptualized as gremlins and autopilots. Gremlins being the thoughts we don't want to have and autopilots being the more positive thoughts we want to replace the gremlins with. But despite this constructive advice, you might be thinking, why do we engage such irrational interpretations of our emotions anyway? As Ryan Bush highlights in his book, we engage such irrational interpretations because it feels good. We're not a victim to our painful emotions, we actively indulge them. As perverse as it may seem, we get an emotional high from catastrophizing or jumping to conclusions because our reward circuits train us to do it more. In order to choose long-term well-being, we have to resist the urge to indulge in our own pain. So, in summary, in order to reprogram our cognitive and emotional distortions, we must become masters at awareness, curiosity, introspection, and reinterpretation. Oh no, didn't think of that. Reflections. And after we've outlined our faulty thinking, we're free to understand that when someone attacks us, an event conspires to throw us off balance, or an attractive stranger rejects us, the extent to whether this situation embeds our mind is a testament to how well we've previously developed our cognitive toolkit and how aware we are of it. It is in our power to have an opinion about a thing and not to be disturbed in our soul. The things themselves have no natural power to form our judgments. Finally, through building the habit of noticing every emotional distortion which arises, Rises, we can resist the urge to indulge it and instead shoot it down before it takes our emotional trajectory down with it. And then after we do so, we are free to reinterpret the situation with clarity. And although this task seems daunting, the rewards are invaluable. For when a drunk man hits the wall of a castle with a stick, you don't call it an attack, you call it entertainment. This is the solace awaiting us if we start the path of mastering our emotions. We need only try. If you want to dive deeper into this topic, I recommend Stephen Bartlett's podcast he did with Professor Steve Peters. I recommend this book, Design in the Mind, and also The Chimp Paradox by Professor Steve Peters. Quote of the week before we go. If you are willing to look at another person's behaviour towards you as a reflection of the state of their relationship with themselves, rather than a statement about you as a person, then you will, over a period of time, cease to react at all. This is from the newsletter. Feel free to join if you want to in the description. Adios muchachos.